one of those watching the events closely is Salon Simmons from George Mason University. And always good to talk to you, Salon. Uh, tell us why people want to change so quickly. Well, it's not clear exactly what the people want at this point in time. We're in one of those periods where we have movement one direction, then movement in another direction very quickly. And the crucial problem, of course, is that we're still in a period of near 10 percent unemployment. So it's not obvious if this is really an ideological change or if it has more to do with Obama's perceived performance. And it seems that people are no longer willing to accept the idea that this is Bush's economy, that the people who got you in this mess are the ones who can get you, or are not the ones who can get you out of it. So Obama faces that challenge. The ideology problem, of course, we have the idea of uh, now we're in a period of yes, we can, but for Obama. Uh, can he uh, move forward with uh, what looks like he's going to have an opposition in the House? Can he hold on in the Senate? And what is the role of this Tea Party going to be as it, uh, it seems to be poised to make big gains? Exactly. Uh, one of the juiciest Republican targets uh, would be Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. If he right. loses, Solon, what kind of message does that send to the Democratic Party? Well, I think it's a big message and it's a big rebuke. There's no way to other. There's no other way to see it, and there's going to be and it's going to be read at least in terms, at least partly in terms of ideas and ideology. I think that the big question is, and, and there we have a uh, Sharon Angle, a, a Tea Party back candidate, also in Kentucky, the, the, this candidate Rand Paul. You know, the, the debate about the Tea Party used to be one which pitted uh, bigots versus patriots. We haven't heard that language anymore. There's no sense that there's an ethnocentrism to the party, that they're really an ideologically libertarian party now, or aspect of the party. And so the, the, I think we'll want to see to what extent does that conversation develop? Who are these Tea Party candidates, and what are they going to do when they actually get into positions of power? And they're going to have fairly uh, well-established positions of power, especially if the margins are big. So we're going to be watching turnout, because Democrats are largely demoralized in, in a sense, there's been an attempt to get a politics of fear going on the Democratic side to see if they can spur people to turn out and stop what looks to be a, something of a tsunami moving in the other direction. And a Republican landslide will undoubtedly hurt uh, the Democrats, but will this put President Obama out of the running in 2012? I don't think so. I think it could make it uh, much harder. And, of course, there you want to be looking for governor's races because the control of those uh, state parties matters a lot in terms of how uh, the presidential races can run and also even into the micro details of the, uh, the state legislatures. Um, it, it sends a big um, a message. But remember also that the Republican Party was known as the party of no through most of this. And, of course, the Republicans will tell you that they have plenty of good ideas. The question is, are they really pragmatic ideas that would have done something about getting us out of this economic slump? Or is it going to, are they now going to own some of this economy? And then will they, therefore, be blamed for it? I think that we're going to be in a period of long trench warfare, something fairly um, bloody in political terms. And we, and we might have quite a bit of investigations that, that could, uh, quite a few investigations that could pop up. So be ready for those kind of dirty politics. This was a really dirty campaign. Okay, Salon, thanks so much. Good to talk to you. Hopefully we can talk to you tomorrow for the aftermath. Okay, that'd be great. Nice to talk to you, Marcy.